Hello, everybody, and welcome. It is NBL Overtime. The US, the Canadians, and the Tall Blacks are here in what is going to be a huge week in the international basketball front. Melbourne and Cairns have finalised their imports, and the Boomers have lost a little athleticism, but a great story is developing on the back of it. Hello, I'm Cameron Luke. Get involved anytime you like. Hashtag NBL Overtime. Man down. We are a man <laughs> down. Homicide, of course, away. Big game tonight. We'll tell you exactly where it is because... We're going to see Canada and the Tallbacks go at it. So he's involved in that. We'll talk about that and plenty more. But Liam Santamaria is here, mate. Hello to you. Hello. Nice to get that big, warm oh, welcome yeah. that Corey usually <laughs> gets. Is that normally do, man? It, hey, <laughs> you just work out, look good you, naked, etc., etc. Et all the love. Yeah, no, thanks. Um, give some cash for comments as well. <laughs> see if you can get some free tickets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, big show. We've got a lot yeah. to get through. So Huge. good to have the Boomers playing on home soil. Um, it's getting exciting, the lead-up to the World Cup. And... There is a lot going on. Still movement within the roster, which is amazing. It's huge. We're going to get into it very shortly. But it, just for you and I, who are basketball nerds and purists and just love the game, it is, it is an exciting week, though, mm -hmm. isn't it? Like Marvel Stadium, 55,000 times two. USA are here. A lot of talk about the roster, but you've been there and, and, and chatting to Popovich and Kerr and the players. 48 hours time, we're going to be sitting in that stadium and it's going to be really cool. Yeah, it feels... Last time I kind of, it felt a little bit like this was in 2015, the Homecoming yes. series. We get to mm -hmm. now. It wasn't against Team USA, it wasn't at Marvel Stadium. But that was when, the last time we felt like we had like all those big NBA names on the floor and Patty and Bogut and those guys. And having them uh, back in action again and, um, boy, these couple of games are just a couple of days away and the excitement is building. Let's start with the Boomers because it has been an interesting couple of weeks. Firstly, the selection of the team, some omissions there that caused a little bit of controversy and, in the end, they went to Perth last week at RAC Arena. Friday night, a pretty big loss to Canada. They bounced back Saturday. Then on the back of it, the Jonah Boldle situation. Mm. Firstly, we'll start on your observations about these two games. Well, the loss was pretty... Shocking, wasn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, we sat here last week and we looked at the roster that uh, Canada would bring. Now, obviously, they've got some, some good players, some really good players, but we thought that our group would be able to get it done. Mm -hmm. And they got, um, they got a reality check on the Friday night. And, you know, we'll talk a little bit further about the specifics of what they learnt on that night. Obviously, Jock Landau was a big takeaway from the two games and uh, he, was, he was really, really good. This is where they picked it up in game two when they kind of stepped it up defensively and Creaky was a big part of that. Daly certainly set the tone and it was really good to see them bounce back. It was still a ball game for a lot of it and it was, um, you know, Canada made it pretty close in that second half. The guys had to dig in and um, you know, obviously Jonah Bolden stepped up and played really well mm. as well. So there was a lot to kind of glean from it but the... I think there was a lot of good to take out of that loss that they had on the Friday night. See, the thing, Andre Lomanis has said this. He's picking a team. It's not an all-star team, it's a team. And one mm. that he has to do with a different amount of skill sets to be able to mould together towards the World Cup. And I'm not a massive pre-season sport person, as in I don't look too deeply into it. And a lot of social media age we live in, the whole, uh, same with the whole basketball world was falling apart Saturday morning after the loss on Friday night. But if you're going to pick a team like this, as Andre Lamanas has, there is going to be times where there'll be some dysfunction and some disjointment as they work towards getting it together. And I don't, look, well, Friday night probably slapped this in the face because we don't expect the Canadians to be as good with them, so many guys missing as well. But I also think that if you put together a crew that got to click together, mm -hmm. it's going to take some time. And mm. I think that was the most obvious thing about Friday night. A couple of little tweaks on Saturday night where they played a hell of a lot better. And this is what these games are for, the USA games and a couple more warm-up games to the World Cup. The World Cup is where we're going to look at it and we can say if this was the right, the wrong squad to put together and we can pick apart what they did or didn't do. But I think if you put together a team like that where he's so much on teamwork, I don't think their first game together officially on Friday night was a great surprise. Yeah, they, they definitely lack that cohesion mm. and that's that's going to happen. You could Which see is, that... That's not surprising, though, is it? No, 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 not. Nah. of course not. And you could see that at the offensive end where there was that hesitation and um, guys weren't necessarily where each other expected yes. to be. There were a couple of nice plays to start the game where it, we got a, a look, a look hark back to sort of that team in Rio where they uh, were playing beautiful basketball. But there was a lot of clunkiness at the offensive end. But then I think there was a there was a bit of mental rust defensively, um, and in terms of just remembering what it takes 
do you need to put in at the defensive end to be successful at the international level? And also the cohesiveness, the execution defensively, and a lot of that improved in that second game. Three weeks ago, right before... Probably a little bit further back than it. We'll say six weeks ago before the Ben Simmons situation. And three weeks ago, we sat on this very show and we spoke about Jonah Bolden, we spoke about Brock Modem, we spoke about Dinger Dale, guys with NBA experience, two still in the NBA, being a part of the Boomers. Dinger Dale and Brock Modem were not chosen. Mm. Jonah Bolden was, mm -hmm. but then withdrew on Sunday morning. Where do you sit? Well, in general terms, mm -hmm. it's been a heavily interrupted um, lead up. Mm -hmm. uh, this whole, you know, this whole process, all those things that you just laid out there. Ben Simmons is in, he's out, he's in, he's out, um, and then. Creaky and the, all of that distraction, the Xavier Cooks injury, now Creaky's back in, the Bolden withdrawal obviously is, See? is a heavy disruption and, to, and a distraction, See, to be honest. The, the, the other way, the Mitch Creek situation, that's a decision by the coaching staff. So while it's, I don't find it to be a distraction because they picked their team, although it probably blindsided mm. a, a lot of us who thought it'd be in the team, and then Xavier Cooks unfortunately gets injured and adds a little bit of... A disruption, I guess, from a from a team chemistry point of view, but it's still early in it. The Jonah Bolden thing's interesting. Yeah. Because, and I say the same thing about the Aaron Fox from the USA team, you go through everything. Mm. Now, Ben Simmons pulled out, Ryan Brokoff had pulled out much earlier for, for family reasons with the new bub. I get all of putting your hand up for whatever reason, but to get through, putting your hand up, getting through selection, through the camp, into the naming of the team, into the first two games, and then deciding to pull out... Mm. That's when it becomes a real distraction and one that needs to be questioned a little bit more because has something changed majorly from when you want to play for your country to pulling out after the first two games? Because this is a distraction. Yeah, something's changed. And, and let's, let's be real. Mm -hmm. Let's be real here. The, the, there's not, it's not something that's... Everyone's OK. Talking, it says personal reasons, yeah. OK? Everyone's OK. These are basketball reasons. These are basketball reasons that he's pulled out. Um, and... You know, like speaking to people around the camp and within the circles that know what's going on. These are basketball reasons. And the timing, as Andre Lamana stated in the media release from Basketball Australia, is not only suboptimal, it's really disappointing because there was a commitment made. So what basketball reasons? Well, essentially the basketball reasons are... They're pretty much the same reasons as to why Thon Maker made himself unavailable for the campaign. Um, it's, this is a super important period of time for me in my NBA mm -hmm. career. I am entering into a contract year um, and I need to be performed. I need to show yeah, what hey, I've hey, got. Hey, I need hey, to be hey, performing hey. at a high level. Oh, no, this, is what is, this is what's going yeah. on, clearly. And I need to make sure I'm ticking all the boxes in the lead up to that contract year. Then, and you think, all right, well, part of what's going to be good for me in that process is being a part of this Boomers team and this World Cup campaign. I'm going to start at the four spot. I'm going to play 20 minutes a game and this team's going to go really well. And it's going to be a statement to Brett Brown, the Philadelphia 76ers organisation, everyone across the NBA, that not only am I ready to step up this year, but I'm ready to go to another level the year after. Then the guy goes to Perth. And... Jock Landau's playing at the four. Nick Kay's coming off the bench before him. He feels quite deep in the rotation amongst the bigs and those feelings change. Yes, he came out and had a big impact in game two. I, from what it seems to me, the horse had bolted and he has pulled the pin. This is going to hurt him in the Olympic time. Like, Basketball Australia can, and Andre Lamanas can talk publicly about how, while they're disappointed, they understand. And, and I guess if you look at it from an NBA player's perspective, it is a long campaign. You go from here to a World Cup, into an NBA season, it might continue to go. Philadelphia are expected to be good, and that might be a, a deep, deep playoff run, which then goes straight into the Olympic Games. So, you know, to hear from the NBA players, and CJ McCollum spoke really well on, a, on the Woads podcast a couple of weeks ago, with some of the thinking of, of those players, and, and Jonah Bolden might have a similar thought process. Except he actually got into the situation where he was part of the team. When it comes around to naming the Olympic team, now I'm not saying definitely that he won't be in it, but this will be taken, I think, into some type of, of the conversation around Andre Lamanis and the Basketball Australia coaching staff when putting together the 12 to go to Tokyo. And they might think, well, you know what, Jonah Bolton wasn't overly keen to play a particular role at a particular time. Do we look elsewhere someone who is willing to buy into the team ethos if it's two minutes a game or 35 minutes a yeah. game? 
And, and there, uh, there's so much to pull apart it, with this situation, it, it right? Is. Because um, he, you know, you go and you play those games in Perth, mm -hmm. and Bogut's not playing. Or Baines is not playing the first game, and then well, Bogut's just on not that. So why, right. For a team that has to gel together, mm. okay, and it's huge, and, and we spoke about the fact they didn't. Why isn't everyone playing from day dot? That, that, that fan, I found that to be surprising. Yeah. Well, certainly cohesiveness mm -hmm. and cohesion is and symmetry, it's all yeah. pretty key at this time. Mm -hmm. So, fair call. But you've got to balance that between load management of as course. well. They'd been working hard in camp, putting everything in place, and they just felt maybe, mm -hmm. like maybe those big bodies on a back-to-back. -back, that's probably... Is that mm -hmm. probably going to be the last back-to-back -back from here on out? Um, yep. The one and only that they wanted to manage that. OK, so they did. And, you know, he... As a result of that, so he, he would have felt pretty low playing 11 minutes in a 20-point loss with one of the bigs not playing. But they're working out the rotations. This is the thing. This, it's a, it is a movable feast. It's a work in progress. Things may, well, will and often do change. And we've seen it in campaigns before. You think back to, you know, Aaron Baines at one point sat out had a couple of DMPs in their first couple of warm-up games, ended up playing a massive role in, in that campaign. And I think it's just super disappointing. Now, I can also understand... There's an element of it that I can understand, right? Well, there's a lot of elements, but one in particular is he's going, well, the look of it, right? The look of it for me and, and the, my reputation and going into a contract year, is there a... You know, how deep am I in this rotation? When, when both Boga and Baines are playing. They're the top two guys in the five spot. OK, was Landau playing at the four? Is Nick Kay going to come off the bench ahead of me in the four spot? Am I the fifth big? But isn't, isn't, that, because, based, isn't that based thinking, on camp? He's, well... Isn't that based on his, sure. on his on his on how his basketball's going, how he's fitted in? Like, it's not like he dominated camp. Now, I didn't well, see any right. of it. And then Andre Lamana said, you know what, Jonah Bolden has outplayed Kay, but we'll go, we'll just play Kay just for the sake of it. So while I get that, it's also they're playing themselves into minutes. That's why you go to camp. That's why you play these games okay. and, and fight your way through it. Sure. Um, but look, I'm just stating mm. what, no, I, I, what yeah. it's quite clear that Jonah's thinking. Hey, right? De'Aaron Fox is the same. Didn't play a great deal of minutes last week against Spain for the USA. And while that team is yet to be officially named down to 12, he was going to come to Australia and someone that I think a lot of people would, would have liked to have enjoyed what's playing. Yeah, and yeah. So, you know what, well, I'm going to concentrate more on making sure the Sacramento Kings make the playoffs. And it's that, which I don't... I never, ever argue against someone, Ben Simmons, for example, saying, hey, you know what, NBA is really important for obvious reasons. Mm. I just find it interesting when you go put your hand up, you yep. go to camp, be it Australia, US, wherever it is, and then all of a sudden you want to change your yeah. mind based on that NBA season which you knew was there. Yeah, well, but the other thing is, what's mm -hmm. you asked at the very from the outset, what's changed, right? You've made the commitment. Yeah. Well, what's changed, I think, for, for Jonah is his spot in the rotation. He would have been coming in thinking, I'm going to probably start at the four spot. And like I said before, play 20 minutes a game and have a yeah. major yeah. role. And now, hold on, after... What he's done at camp, he's gone, and how those games have played out, he's gone, actually, I'm much deeper in this rotation than I thought I would be. Now, clearly, what he's thinking is, man, I've got this huge year, at, obviously, the reputation stuff, but I've got mm. this huge year ahead. This campaign is going to go for so many weeks, and if I'm not playing, we're not doing a lot of skills work, right? We're going, walking through mm. sets. It's, he's like, I would be better off going home, doing two-a-days, and get, get making sure I'm cherry right. Now, the flip side is, and this is what I feel strongest about, personally, as someone who wants the Boomers to win a medal and do really well, is you've made a commitment. You've committed. Thon Maker made that decision ages, ages ago. ago. So you say, fair enough. At this point, you've been selected. We're into the preparation. You've got to ride this thing out. The irony thing, he, he probably earned himself more minutes the way he played Saturday night. And that's the thing that, who knows? Now, I have no idea what the conversation might have been with Andre Lamanis, but you would have thought with his athleticism and the matchups against the USA, it might have changed a bit. He came out, played some good basketball Saturday night, and that's exactly what, when you said about Aaron Baines a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. that's exactly what he did. 100%. He came out, banged some bodies, yep. got some rebounds, forced him way into the rotation, and now look, where he was a starter at the end of that tournament, and, and I'm not saying Bolton would have definitely have started, but that's the irony, I think, of the way he played Saturday night. All right, Jonah Bolton is not there. David Barlow is. Mm. 13 years after his, uh, well, 2006 his international debut, he will be an Australian boomer, of course, a man who, if you look at Melbourne United and the way he played about it last year and was able to get over some real tough injuries and had a really good year, someone we spoke about in 
uh, the highest of narrative last year and he's earned him way into it. And you were probably the first person that I did see tweet. You were at a scrimmage the other day and David Barlow was in the periphery, standing behind the boomers bench and yep. you floated it and mm -hmm. it was officially announced today. And it's a great story it for is. David Barlow. You know, two-time Olympian and really he might have in the back of his mind and most people thought his career was done mm -hmm. and his opportunity to play for the green and gold in a major international tournament was long gone. But wow, what a bounce back he has pulled off over the last two years, especially last season. We know what he was able to do for Melbourne United and, as you say, participate in the qualifying and now he's been caught up. Now, there's always, in this situation, there's always conversation about who else it could have been and mm -hmm. should have been and might have been and whatnot. And those conversations are valid, we can have them, but in isolation, you can't help but be happy for Dave Barlow. The journey he's taken and also see what he's going to be able to bring to the team. He's an outstanding post defender. He's excellent guarding the pick and roll when you go in that screen guy. And he can step out and knock a down shot 40% from three for Melbourne United in the NBL last year. So he ticks a lot of boxes for what they want as an insurance guy at the four. He ticks one major box, I think. And the very fact that we spoke about Jonah Bolden not being overly happy with his role, and that might be the reason, He's a guy who's going to come in, David yep. Barlow, and fit nicely into the team. We've seen him do it at Melbourne, and he's done his whole career, in particular mm. later, I guess, when he hasn't been the star and injuries have slowed him down somewhat along with age. He's come in fit. So if he only plays 11 minutes or he plays three minutes, you know you're going to get mm -hmm. one veteran savvy leadership both on and off the court. It's continued to be preached from Andre Lomanis around the team ethos and this is what we hear. It's not an all-star team. We're all buying in to get that medal at the World Cup and you know 100% that is what David Barlow is going to fight in. So one minute or 20 minutes, he's not going to be concerned. You know you get 100% from him on every play. Now, yeah. the question is though, mm. he wasn't in the squad mm -hmm. originally so you, you by the very fact of that, Brock Modem and Dengadel were both in front of him based on the fact that they are in the squad. Do you know if either of those two were spoken to or consulted or at least a conversation about having one of those players replace Jonah Bolden? You would have to think Brock Modem was called. I agree. We know he's in Spain. Mm -hmm. He's playing for Valencia this year and he's gone over and he's been introduced over there, he's settling in there and he's started preparing for the season be a hard turnaround to, you know, it would have been very difficult to get back in time for these US games. Yep. S still, you would hope that there would have been consideration to say, all right, well, maybe not for game one of these US games, maybe not any of them, but there's a whole World Cup to be played and we'd love to have you on the squad, so on and so forth. You would hope that that conversation took place because this is a guy who played a considerable role, considerable role for a EuroLeague team, was playing minutes in the EuroLeague final a couple of months ago, and is at that level. Plays against these guys week in and all week the time. out and does really well. And so you would hope that that conversation happened. And if it has, and I don't know whether it has or it hasn't, I've reached out, I haven't heard back. If it has, then the only assumption is that he said, you know what, nah, I'm here, I'm getting ready for the ACB and you're going to have to look elsewhere. Hashtag NBL overtime to get involved. What, what's happened over the last week and a little bit, or at least the two games, the Bolden withdrawal, has that dulled your prediction that they are a huge chance for a medal. Yes, it has. And, <clears throat> I mean, it's a... Barlow will help, but Bolden is an NBA-level mm -hmm. talent, right? And, he's, and then you start to... There's just a lot going on for this Boomers team that is not ideal in the preparation, as I was talking about before. And I, I think that hinders their chances. And you look at... You know, now we've got Simmons... Bolden, Maker, Brokoff, all healthy, but not playing. And you've got no Dante Exum as well. So this, this, this team that we expected a while back mm -hmm. to be 10 or 11 NBA guys with maybe one or two guys from the NBL might be lucky enough to make the squad. Now it's not that. And it's not that team that we thought was going to be the, the old guard with the veteran experience of, of Dally and uh, Joe and Patty and Aaron and, and Bogey, plus the next generation. It's not that either. So it's not what we expected. It's not the team that we thought was going to, you know, really go a long way in this World Cup. Now, who, that core group still has the potential to make some See? noise, but I'm nowhere mm. near as confident as what I was a little while ago. It might still work for them, if not at this World Cup, 
maybe at the lower end of expectations heading towards the Tokyo Olympics. It's a long way we've been, not just you and I, a lot of people have been so excited at the thought of first ever medal for a senior men's basketball team, okay, at a major mm. tournament. And be it the World Cup or be it the Olympic Games. Now, any medals not to be sneezed at, obviously, they've never got one before. But the very fact is, there might be a good opportunity talking about blooding players or giving international exposure, which only makes a team deeper when we do expect, when we get to the Olympic Games next year, mm -hmm. some of these other guys to possibly be included in the Boomers team. So while it could be a little disappointing if they don't, in fact, medal in China, it might, in fact, in the long run, Lean towards Tokyo. But who, actually who are we the playing? Team. Jock Landau. Well, Lund Landau's going to be playing. And who else? Well, Sobey's getting an opportunity that he wouldn't have got. OK, we've got, well, Chris Golding's been there for a little while. Cam Glidden now, obviously, with broke off and but those the, guys I mean, coming the, in. But the, the it idea, still means a deeper... Take yourself six, nine months back. The idea was of blooding Dante and Thon Maker and Ben Simmons' first time on the but, team but, and Jonah Bolden. That's... And then building from that but to Tokyo. I mean, I don't I want to be a Debbie I, I, Downer. I agree about. with what you're saying, but I also think that when it comes to some of the blooding, a lot of that's being able to handle the intensity of a major tournament, which I think you get in the NBA as it is. So I think the step from the NBL to the World Cup's a little different to the NBA to the World Cup. Mm. Oh, I'm not saying... Obviously, we all... A month ago, six weeks ago, six months ago, we thought China is going to be so exciting for all the reasons that we continue to talk about and it is going to be somewhat disappointing if the boomers don't meddle. But I still think there could be a silver lining if, in fact... Mm. And there's still question marks now over who is, in fact, going to want to play the Olympic Games. Is it those same... I think, the, I think the FIBA tournament, the World Cup, is poorly timed. I think they need to work with the NBA a little closer to try and work out. So not just here in Australia, but players right across the world and the USA, for obvious reasons, are able to be able to field a, a stronger... what they would perceive to be a stronger team. Mm. But I also think that there would be maybe some question marks over some of these guys heading to Tokyo. I hope I'm wrong, mm. but the fact is that they've chosen to not, for whatever reason, participate in this team... They might still be lingering question marks come Tokyo in, you know, what, 11 or 12 months' time. All right. Hashtag NBL overtime to get involved. We threw it out there on Insta and, and Twitter today. Boomers fan question. So we'll uh -oh. get to that. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, all right. Now, let's start there. Did we, well, we sort of touched on this a little bit, but Benny Smith, did we lose athleticism in Bolden? And whose minutes change as a result of the new roster? Who, who does get more, I think, obvious answer, the, the uh, athleticism one, but who gets a little more opportunity now with, with Bolden not being there? Outside of David Butler, who's now on the team. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Landau looked like he had worked his way into a big, big role. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. I think the two guys that probably get a little uptick in minutes are Nick Kay and Mitch Creek. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if Nick Kay really kind of showed that he's... Um, I don't think he had maybe the couple of games that he would have loved to have mm -hmm. had. He, you know, you can always rely on him to, to give maximum effort and... and um, you know, have an, an impact, get on the offensive glass, he can step out and knock it down. He's going to need to really have, you know, step up. Um, I'm excited about the idea that Mitch Creek might play some minutes at the four. Mm. Because whilst, you know, he's not super tall, he's 6'5", we have seen him play uh, at the four for Adelaide, we've seen him play at the four sometimes with Long Island and also in the green and gold. Now, that's in... The Asia Cup smaller. and some yeah. smaller against some small lineups, but boy, is he a handful in transition going the other way when he is playing as one of the bigs. So, um, also liked when he got out there. He, his first one of his first catches, cutting towards the rim, down the middle, catch, and um, it was like a strong arm, yeah. str an old man strong move. Yeah. And we need a little bit of that. You know, Bainesy gives us some of that. Creaky will come in and give us some of those minutes as well. I really like with Mitch Creek. Of course, you, you spoke about it earlier about you know the roller coaster two weeks that he's, he's kind of had, and uh, Homicide spoke to him pre-game about it and how he deals with it. And he just said, "Look, I'm here. I've just got to keep working hard every single day it comes." And there was no. It might have been a little disjointed for him when it came to chemistry or team prep or whatever it might have been, but his intensity was at an all-time high, and I think that was great to see from Mitch Creek. And not we would expect anything less, mm. but the way that he just entered the game ready to go on the weekend. And, and he is, you know, you talk about stay ready, guys. Mm -hmm. He is the perfect example of that. He is like, I am ready to go to take advantage of a situation. All right, I didn't make the team. Mm -hmm. Didn't say anything silly. I nope. kept my powder dry, wished the guys luck, and stayed ready. And, they, he, you know, Cooks went down, got the call, I'm ready. Now Bolden's withdrawn, his minutes go up. Who knows how things play out? You think back to Rio, Cam Besto was killing it the first couple of games, mm. gets his shoulder injury, now everyone Changes. else has to... Things change. So Mitch Creek 
is in that mode of just being ready to take advantage of what comes. What's better, expecting to meddle or being an underdog, asks Cam. What do you think? Which actually, is actually quite a good question, considering really where we've been. It's a really good question. And uh, I think being the underdog is, is way better because they still have, will have the confidence. Mm -hmm. They'll set their goal wherever, you know, as, as lofty as they want to do and they'll aim for it and they'll go after it. But the expectation changes and, you know, it, it impacts on the group. What the expectation... I'll say we block out all the outside noise, but the, it does impact. And I think they rolled into, like I said before, they rolled into that game one against Canada expecting to win. And they played a bit like mm. it, especially at the defensive end. And you take that, you, the squad changes and guys go out and maybe that expectation lowers a little bit, changes the way you approach it, I think you play better. All right, any more? Georgie, who would you have chosen to replace Bolden? Who, who would you if, you... if anyone's right to go, who would you have chosen? Modem, obviously. Mm. But there's another name that should be thrown around here. Hit me. Isaac Humphreys. Now, I know, and the reason I say it, not under... I, I, I'm saying not... Under these circumstances, the circumstances that they were in in the last 24 hours to find the replacement, I think they've gone with the right guy. Mm -hmm. But I think this situation sort of brings about the question of why, was, why wasn't Isaac Humphreys at the, the camp? Why wasn't he in that initial squad? With what he's been able to do over, over recent times, I thought he looked really good when he played in the green and gold against, I think it was Iran, at 20 points, mm -hmm. eight rebounds, something like that. And um, I was uh, surprised that at camp, I didn't feel... It looked like they didn't have an extra big, a big that wasn't going to make it, right? Now, you look at all the guys at the camp who didn't make it, none of them, Creaky's the biggest. And it, it was surprising that they didn't have a guy there that they were... You put it in place, he's ready to go if there's an injury, and I thought it would, if he had been at camp and Modem says no... He would have been a good guy to bring How many in. people at camp? 18? 19? 18. So, was it 18 or 18 all up with Xavier Cooks who got out of late? Mm. I, I, know, I understand financial restrictions, but I also don't know why Basketball Australia don't just have 25, 28 people there. OK? Now, if it's a financial situation, I can't understand. But I also think with so many players splattered right across the world, not just here in the NBL, but you talk about Isaac Humphries, you talk about a Brock Modem over there, a Landau there... Getting to the Olympics, if it's possible to have as many people as possible jet in and they just go at it, because Isaiah Humphries might not play a great deal, depending on where he is. G League playing enough, but it's sometimes hard to compare doing what he does in the G League against what Brock Modem's doing in Europe or what, say, Mitch Creek might do here in the NBL or what Cade did last year. It's sometimes hard just to compare it. Best way to do it is let all these guys bang at it in camp. Now, financially, I'm not sure yeah. it's viable, mm. but we are also at the... Right now, we're at the point where we are desperately craving a medal with an amazing amount of talent all around the world. Mm. And I think, if it's possible, get them all there. 25, 30, don't yeah. cap it at 18. Because you don't know who's going to come to camp. And ki Everyone keeps telling us, we didn't see it, but Kay dominated camp to the point he's now playing, in, or was playing in front of Jonah Bolden. Mm. Who's to say that Isaac Humphreys wouldn't have come in and done the exact, or a similar thing? Mm. So if it's possible, Basketball Australia... Let's Spe do it next Speaking year. Speaking to that question, though, mm. there was talk about Deng Adele as maybe someone that would, you know, potentially get called up here. They needed a bigger... They needed, they needed a bigger... Big, they yeah, needed they someone did. who could play the four. Yeah. And, when you, and you go, well, you play some small ball. Yeah, you've got to have... Mm -hmm. There's some big bodies that we're going to come up against and you've got to have someone who can defend the post, guard the pick and mm -hmm. roll as, you, as, the, as the big defender, be a huge big body, a strong body, blocking out, keeping guys off the glass. And, Look, um, Barlow... Under the circumstances, is definitely the better pick. You know he's going to hit some people through this campaign. The crowbar. Uh, yeah, the crowbar. <laughs> and I mean legally, of course, uh, over the course of these games against the USA, then into the World Cup and all the rest of it. All right. Mm. Two big games last week against Canada. And uh, to break it down, I don't even know if you're aware of this, but I'm going to send you to the monitor mm. because uh, mm. it's time to check it out to see what, as we look towards the USA games in the World Cup, but what the boomers really need to work on as we head towards uh, what is going to be a huge month of basketball. Hashtag NBL over time to get involved. But let's get to the monitor. Liam Santa Maria, take it away. OK, so we talk about executing at both mm -hmm. ends of the floor, right? Executing offensively, executing defensively. Oh, oh, go back. Can we go back on that play? Um, we saw that they lacked symmetry in game one at the offensive end and they hadn't played together very much and so on and so forth. They were a bit rusty. But I felt like their execution defensively, pause it there, 
So this is what was lacking in game one and was the biggest issue. Our Boomers team, if we're going to do anything against the US, we're not as talented as them across the board. We've got to be a lockdown defensive team. We've got to be working as a unit. And there were some mistakes that we're not used to seeing these kind of experienced guys. You know, you've got Bogut, Daly on the floor. You've got Patty Mills. Watch this action over here where Daly and Bogut are not on the same page guarding this. Roll the tape. Daly thinks it's one coverage. Bogut thinks it's another. And a layup. These communication issues mm -hmm. were happening throughout the game. This next play, keep your eye on Jock Landau. So pause it there. So these, this is a situation where we get into rotations. Switch happens. Landau has to guard the, the guy on the perimeter. Okay, roll the vision. Keep your eye on Landau. He's now guarding the perimeter guy. And pause it there. So in this situation, when, when we and when our Boomers team is locked in defensively, communicating, this is a situation where this is Wiltshire, who is a big. Now he's a stretch big, but he's a big. This, in this situation, usually, Joe would be aware. Look, he is this guy. I can't remember his name. Is this Scrub? Mm -hmm. Knows he has the mismatch, has spaced out, saying, I want it. Let me go to work on Landau. I'm gonna, and in this situation, usually, Joe would communicate with Landale. They would X out of it, switch out, and get rid of the mismatch. Roll the tape. Joe's just sort of standing and watching, no communicating. We've got the mismatch. He goes to work so, all the way to the rim. I, did these, these are great points because this is legitimately what we pause started the show. Yeah, pause it for a split second. This is what we started the show talking about. Mm. This is why I'm not overly concerned about what happened on the weekend because Andre Lamar has pushed... It's not an all-star team, we're mm. a team. And this is their first game. And, mm. and they're not that talented or as talented as some of the other teams, USA, of course, as you touched on before. Mm. But the fact is, this is going to improve. Yes. We already did see it improve on the Big Saturday. Time. So these little mismatches or these little lack of communication lapses they're going to have yeah. is not an overly big surprise. Hence why, for me, what happened on the weekend, the loss, more importantly than the mm. win, has no concern about or at least hurts my confidence of how this team's going to go in China. This is the last play, and it's similar. It's an end ball play where Paddy and Jonah don't communicate. Mm -hmm. Paddy, uh, Jonah thinks they're switching. Paddy thinks they're not. And as a result, Sophie's like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble here. They roll the vision. They just lob it up and get an easy bucket because of miscommunication. And you're right. It did improve in game two, all this stuff. But what the biggest difference in game two was we got up the floor led by Daly, Mitch Creek, and were kind of more disruptive. But you've got to be careful doing that against Team USA. The more you get up the floor, they get by you, they take advantage, they're throwing it down, they're getting open looks. It's this stuff, that stuff there, the team defence that needs to be on point at Marvel Stadium if we're going to hang with that team. And talking to Team USA, they jetted into town earlier this week. They spent a couple of days on the practice court as well, and they are insanely talented. While the LeBrons, the James Hardens, the Steph Currys, the Kevin Durants might not be here for a various amount of reasons, the very fact is that when you look at the talent, we still have 12 NBA or 14 NBA players right now. As we look at some of the uh, highlights from training at the Melbourne Sports and Aquatic Centre in the last couple of days, <laughs> we have got a very... And, mm. Yet again, we have said this before. I understand some of the disappointment with people who paid money for tickets. Every 20 years, we see a group of NBA players on the court on our shores. We have to go back to 2000 yeah. when we watched a group of NBA players representing their country. And you've been at practice the last couple of days and they are an insanely talented team, even if they might not be having or in uniform the high-profile players. They've got some really, really good players. And there's two of them right there, Donovan Mitchell mm -hmm. and Jalen Brown. And, of course, Chris Middleton's an all-star um, and, you know, Brooke Lopez, mm -hmm. Kemba Walker is the, almost basically the yep. star of their team. Jason Tatum. They are stacked with young, up-and-coming talent. And I actually love when Team USA rolls out a squad like this that's like an under-25, mm -hmm. under-26 type of team. Think back, I think maybe it was the 2014 World Cup, and we're looking at, you know, a, it was a squad that ex after that... Experience. I was younger guys. It was James Harden before he was MVP. Yep. James Harden, Steph Curry. These guys a little earlier in their career, and they they came out of that experience and exploded on right. the NBA scene and became the best players in the league. And um, 
there's we're, we're going to be looking at some of the guys who, in a couple of years' time, this, are going to be the best players this, in the league. This is this is what I, I get again. I'm mindful of how much basketball a lot of these guys have got to play. But you touched on it. Mm. Derek Rose with 2010 Worlds played really well. Mm -hmm. MVP of the year later. Kevin mm. Durant become a superstar on the back of it. Steph Curry, James yes. Harden. A lot of these guys explode on. on the back of, mm. of, of national duties or international play. And that's why I find it sometimes a little bit hard to fathom when you say, no, nah, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that. And then you go on Instagram and you see these guys playing It's an accountant on a Tuesday night at their local YMCA where they could get hurt. It just makes no sense. I understand the grind of it. But you become a better player under Greg Popovich, under Steve Kerr, mm -hmm. under Jay Wright. Like the, 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 like the creme la creme of NBA and college coaches. And mm. they are going to be a fun team to watch because, as Aaron Bain said last week, yeah. there might be a little chip on their shoulder as well because a lot of people are talking about who's not there more so than who is. And they might have tinkered the way they play because I think they'll be a bit more up-tempo and get the ball up like a college team. Yeah. But I also think that, essentially, they're going to be... They're, they're the favourites and they deservedly so. 100%. What, what, was the, what were the comments that CJ McCollum... So CJ McCollum in the, in, the, in the Woj podcast, he simply said that with the timing of it, yeah. it was you go to the FIBA World Cup, you come straight back, there's no break, you're into the NBA preseason, mm. then you go preseason, uh, into the season, you go deep, and then there's an Olympic Games. Yeah, and but he... wasn't there... Wasn't he saying also, I heard that he's... I didn't watch the whole clips mm -hmm. of what he said, but I heard that there was stuff about big names started yes. pulling out... yeah. So this, this is this is the case. He yeah. also went on to say, big names pull out, so it, it's like, well, he's not going to play. Hang on a second, maybe it's best if I don't play. And then... Yeah, but why? Why is it best that I don't play? Because if they're, if they're, if they're going to get ready, maybe I should be getting ready. No, because I, I but, thought he said on. something along the lines of... About the Olympic Games. No, no, no. So that guys are looking at it with all these other, other guys pulling out saying, do I really want to be a part of the team, the that, team that, that, that might lose? Was that, is that he, he did say you don't because there's if that's a feeling. the case, give me a spell. Uh, that is, but that is I tell you not, what he good point he made. Why you you don't with, with you know what else you know what else he mentioned? Being afraid of losing. He mentioned I agree, but he also mentioned the fact that because Woj asked him, he said, had they have guaranteed you an Olympic spot, would you have gone? He said yes, but they wouldn't do that because the players who would play like his level, the mm. tier just below the superstars, mm. they know and the superstars know that if they want to play the Olympic Games, they're the first selected. And then the people below are like, if I'm going to go on this hugely long season and really grind it out and get tired of all the rest of it without the Olympics at the back of it, yeah. is there the use to play? Now, I don't necessarily agree with all of that, but I'm also I also can see a little bit of what he's saying with the long way they've yeah. got to go at it. But I want to address that thing. Yeah, I agree. Because do you? I, I, I'm worried about being on the team that so, loses, so I won't play. Hey, because I do, and here's why I want to address it. Yeah. Kudos to these guys that are here, that are at MSAC mm -hmm. every day right now, yes. that are on the squad. Yes. Donovan Mitchell, Kemba Walker, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. These guys who are saying, "Are you serious? We've got to pull." If you get the so, chance to pull on the jersey and represent the Stars and Stripes, you do it and you go out there and you bust your ass and you try and get a win and you maintain what those who have come before us have built, this reputation that we should go and win and you go out there and you do it. That's why I've got a lot of love for the yeah, guys that are here. True. Not, I mean... But I think it was more... The guys that are running scared? I mean, come on. The, the ironic thing about that is is it's directly related to your talent. Like, if you're good enough to win, <laughs> you're good enough to win, it's not your reputation that should be getting hurt if you're not good enough to do it. Come but on. that's also similar theory to Jonah Bolden not playing. It's, it's very Just similar. saying, you know what, I, I should be. I think I should be playing more and it's going to hurt my brand going to a contract year. And his minutes are directly related to his play and him going up against someone else. But there you go. Uh, who will win this weekend? Can, they, can you see the Boomers getting one? It's not beyond the realms of possibility. So you're sitting on the fence. Thank well, you. but I didn't. I didn't. Wasn't previously sitting on the fence. I thought we would win one. You actually said. But you, I feel like when I'm not as when they announced the, anymore. you announced when they announced the USA team, yeah. which featured James Harden or the squad. You on that show, you said the Boomers will beat this team in Melbourne. Well, at that point, we had Ben Simmons, mm -hmm. we had Jonah Bolden, mm -hmm. we had Thon Maker at that point. Yeah. Still, uh, that was going to be a very different Boomers team. That Harden. Blood. 
There's a couple, couple, they're missing a couple too, but I do see your point. All right, the Tall Blacks play tonight against Canada. The International Ooh. Basketball Series continues. Uh, we're at 20 minutes away, actually, from tip off. Yeah. You can get that on SBS On Demand. That's where you can uh, get your fix of uh, Corey Carey, Horacide <laughs> Williams. Big shout out to Aaron Baines. Um, <laughs> this will be an interesting game tonight. Two teams that. Uh, obviously, we're looking at the uh, the NBL players here in the Tall Blacks. There's yeah. Abercrombie in that game winner mm -hmm. last year against uh, Brisbane. It'll be an interesting game tonight. See how, how, and we've got a little bit of comparison now because Canada have been against the Australians a couple of times. Yeah, so it'll be yeah. good to see how these two match up on each other. Yeah, and the um, who are we looking at there? Rob Lowe. Mm -hmm. um, and the Kiwis have played a couple of games. Yes. The Tall Blacks have uh, gone one win and one loss against Japan. And... Um, there's been Diesel looking for him to do some some good things. He was on a little bit of beast mode in the second Japanese game, wasn't he? Actually, uh, well, he didn't have a massive game. He's had a couple of massive plays. That's all I want. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tell you who I'm looking. A for reverse to dunk and a tip jam. Obviously, all the NBL guys. <laughs> yes. Ooh, ooh, we look, a big Alex Pledger, the chief. Oh, boom. Um, we always want the NBL guys to play well. I'm looking forward to see a couple of the key tall blacks. Yes. Who are not playing in the uh, National League this season? Uh, Ty. Webster mm -hmm. and Isaac Fotu, um, because they're going to have to be humongous. Isaac Fotu for would be this great in the Tall Blacks team would have mm -hmm. been good for Melbourne. I, don't mm -hmm. I thought they were going to get him. Um, oh, really? Early in the se in okay. the off season, yeah. Um, Ty Webster, massive key for this Tall Blacks team. Now, we want them to do well. At the World Cup, not too well, not better than us. No. We want to get that Olympic spot, but you always want the uh, the Tall Blacks to do pretty well and. Um, I would love to see both those guys, Ty Webster and Isaac Fotu, when they're finished up in Europe or at some stage soon, if someone can throw enough money at them, get them in the NBL. Hashtag NBL overtime to get involved. Some NBL news kicking around. We'll end on this because Cairns Taipans and being a source of conversation over the course of NBL overtime off-season, uh, they have finalised their roster. DJ Newbel is back okay. in Taipans colours. We look at the depth chart of the Taipans. What do you make of this roster now? It's all done. Well, I've tinkered with the depth chart. OK. Because... I think Cam Oliver's going to play a bunch of minutes at the five. I think that's a position battle there at the five to see who will start. Mm -hmm. I actually think, and I've had some conversations, and I know for a fact that Mike Kelly is hes looking quite strongly at the, the idea of starting Majuk Deng at power forward. Um, they obviously, Tom Jervis retired, and they did not sign a, another centre in their last couple of signings. They elevated Anthony Fisher for a bit of extra depth at point guard. And they signed George Blagojevic, uh, who is played at the four in college and they want to play at the three. This team has no depth whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Okay, they've got... They're going to have maybe one to two guys at the level coming off the bench. Just don't shoot me, but that's what I feel. But there's some fun to be had with their starting lineup. It is a cool, interesting, unique starting five. Mm. They're going to get up. I like the man, I like Deng starting, OK? And we have to go all the way back to the grand final series of, mm -hmm. of 2018 mm -hmm. to probably see his best basketball. Obviously, Josh Childress was out and, and he got extra responsibility and Joey Wright put it on him. And he, he was at, at times, if Adelaide were going to steal that and they weren't far off going to a game five, it, there's an argument he could have been the MVP of that series mm -hmm. had Adelaide have won it. Now, mm -hmm. last year was disappointing. Bunch of reasons. But this year, it's going to be responsibility and they're gonna, if they're going to give him... The four and say, get out there and hoop. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really fun to watch. Win or lose, yep. sink or swim for uh, Majuk Deng, I think it's going to be cool to watch. Yeah, and Quatnoy is going to be an exciting rookie. Machado certainly has a lot of pedigree coming in. And I like, they've, I've said this before, I like that they've gone for a, mm -hmm. a pass first point guard, a guy that's going to get that ball moving and get all those guys involved. DJ Newble, it's a really good re signing because you know, it's, I like it, always like it when a club from the outset states, this is the guy we want. We want to get this done. We're going to be public about it, sure. If we don't get it done, it's not going to look good. No. But they did get it done. They Got did it. sign him his third year in the league and he knows what it's all about. He's going to have to play a big, big role for him. And Cam Oliver. Now, his agent... I spoke with his agent a while back about Cam. I was like, what's going on? Tell yeah. me a bit... I talked to him at Summer League mm -hmm. and the like. What's, tell me about Cam Oliver because... I want, what, do they do? what are they doing in the front court? He said, man, he's going to play a bunch of minutes at the five. He said, now this agents say things about their players. This is an agent, this is Daniel Moldovan, Lighthouse Sports, who has a, he knows the league intimately. A lot of high level players are his clients. He said, Cam Oliver is very similar to Sean Long, just better. 
You and I watched his G League highlights in Vegas at Summer League, and it was a 12 minute dunkathon. <laughs> so we haven't seen him play too much up and down the floor, but yeah. we know that he gets above the rim, not mm -hmm. dissimilar to Sean Long. So let's see how it happens. We'll see how it plays. If out. he's better than Sean Long, then they've got a good. I, I like what Cairns have done, mainly because they had to go outside the square a little bit. I think Illawarra and them. Financially, probably a little bit below some of the bigger teams, so they've got to think outside the square. And oh, shout out to Lamelo Ball and RJ Hampton, who of yes. course uh, yeah. touched down in their respective countries yep. and where they're going to be Wasn't playing there. their ball this year. Um, but the big thing will be, I like the Cairns have said, you know what, we're going to do something a little bit different, and they're going to be fun to watch. Depth will be an issue, as you pointed out, but I yep. think they'll be fun to watch. And they're... I think the Cairns community, as they always do, will get behind the squad. They've also, in the last couple of days, stolen. Um... Long time, a long time Perth Wildcats team manager who does, has been doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes at the Wildcats in that organisation for a long, for a long time. Yeah. See, all right. So, they, okay. I was unaware of this, but you know, if you can't steal a player, steal a team manager. That's well, a theory I've always gotta, had. Hey, you got to tick all the boxes. <laughs> this is a guy who knows how it how it all works at a at a uh, successful program. So that's a good get. Now, Melbourne United United kick started their preseason on Sunday with a fairly easy win over Chinese uh, visiting team, Brian mm. Gorgian's squad. But they've also finalised their roster. Mm. What'd you make of this? Joe Luala, cool. Uh, the um, seven footer out of Baylor. There he is, number, what is he, 53. Look at him, put yeah. it on the deck, rise up, finish through traffic, and one. Had 20 points. Now, number 21 there, the guy helping his teammate off the floor, um, that's one of the Chinese national players, Hu Jin Chu. Mm -hmm. So, oh, look at that. Just rocking the cradle. Um, and he played really well against him. Now, Hu Jin Chu had about, I think, 28, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, Luala Kul had you know, led the way for Melbourne with 20, and... This is a guy coming in with plenty of talent. Now, it's from he's, a... He's very raw. Raw. He's very raw. Like, has a lot of upside. Mm -hmm. And from a fit or a need perspective, I'm not sure he ticks well, the boxes that they needed to tick. Is he a straight a five? Talent, yeah. But is there so. any way... Yeah. Can, we've spoken about the four. Prather, Dave Parler, who played and started last year. Like, yeah. Can he play four? Uh, I don't think... He, not, in, not this year. He's no, not okay. ready to play the four no. this year. He's not strong enough. Mm -hmm. He's... he's I mean, you look at some of the mobile fours around the league, I'm not sure he's going to be able to go with them. So I think he gives them depth at the five. Did you go to that game? Yes. Sam McDaniel... Really good. Yeah. Yeah. Caught fire in the fourth quarter. Mm. Just pull up mid-range, really poised. We knew he was going to be an NBL player. I mean, this is when you see a team sign a guy to a contract where you're... OK, you're a DP year one, and then you're guaranteed to elevate... That guy tends to be a pretty good player. Will Magne got that signing. He's going to be good for Brisbane. Sam McDaniel last year had that. Uh, Adelaide have signed Alex Madronia, point mm -hmm. guard out of St Mary's, to a, to a deal exactly like that, and he's going to be a player. Were they 10 down a three-quarter time, Melbourne, or one by 20? I had my kids there. I was a little distracted. <laughs> oh, jeez, all right. <laughs> On that note, anything else before we do get out of here, mate? Of course, Marvel Stadium Thursday night. It's going to be a big one. Uh, SBS On Demand in around 10 minutes' time as well if you want to see Corey Homicide Williams. Actually, just on that. Yes. Okay. You and I were at the NBL One Grand Final commentating mm. on Saturday night, mm. and then my Twitter went into meltdown. <laughs> because someone... Meltdown. <laughs> you finally got some notifications. <laughs> yeah, for nothing I did. <laughs> <laughs> someone in the NBL head office suggested that I'd uh, said to Aaron Baines, a man I've never spoken to, <laughs> that he had to fit in uh, five carries in a pre-interview. And I'll just shout out to our man, Homicide, because he did not miss a beat in that no, interview as well. No, he stayed solid. But yeah. clearly someone, someone okay, yeah. uh, did lay out that challenge. <laughs> yeah. I love the challenge, mind you. I just wasn't mind Well, it'd be interesting to see if that rolls on down yeah. here in Melbourne. Hashtag NBL overtime to get involved. We are done. We're dusted. Uh, SBS on demand. Only moments away. Or NBL TV as well. Lamello Ball, RJ Hampton in town. We're starting yep. to really get amped up right now. Is LeVar in country or not? I think he's coming oh. into town. On that note, NBL Overtime. We'll be back this time next week. So yeah.